Hang on some tyres that are, I would think are highly suited to rally cross in these dry conditions. On the second row, 176 Ivan Gill and number 95 Rob Gooding making the third step. And Ivan making a very slow start from the back row with the Metro. Watch him because he's a very quick car driver combination. Already up into fourth position as we Barry Rapley comes through to take the lead from Vic Mice. And also coming in there to challenge the Citroen Visa of John Waghorn coming through on the inside into second place with Vic Mice getting second back and tucking in behind Barry Rapley as they go down into the Devil's Elbow for the first time. 57, Barry Rapley from Vic Mice. Then comes John Waghorn. Ivan Gill already up into fourth position. Then comes number 96, Adrian Kingwell. Nice to see him back again. And it's also good to see Rob Gooding there, Cliff Gooding's brother, having his first race outside of the SPC category. Coming up the hill there in the moment in the 15.50 Mini in last position, I must admit, but still his first ever race in Formula D. But up front, it's now Quick Vic Mice, who's got that lead back again and pulling well clear now of Barry Rapley. The bees are still in third place, coming under the watch line now of Ivan Gill as they go through the chicane and away at the end of lap one. 96 Adrian Kingwell and a bit of a gap to this nicely turned out car of 95 now. And Rob Gooding. But uh, the leader's already coming off the Chesson's Drift area and onto the Dover Slope for the second time with Vic Mice now establishing himself as a clear leader, capitalising upon that good time. As they go up the hill, round the right-hander, the battle for second place now becoming very intense because Ivan Gill was getting in there with them. Ivan Gill with the Brian Slark powered Metro, you may have heard that I didn't think it was quick. Apart from a uh, steering breakage, it was very quick indeed. And he's there in third for the Citroen V's and arrow of John Waghorn and coming up to have a look at Barry Rapley, second place, number 57 Mini. Barry still keeping that lead yeah. into second place now. Half a lap left to try and do something about Vic Mice. I think Vic's too far clear now for the Bristol boys to be able to make any impression upon the leader. The Citroen Visa, which I would think is lacking in the tyre department, still there in fourth position as Quick Vic goes through the chicane and away down into Chesson. In second place, getting a little bit crossed up there on the exit of the chicane. The bees are looking quite smooth, I must admit, despite the fact that I think he may well need more in the way of racing tyres to get the full potential from that car. Is the win then for 3-7. Give us a thrill, Gill, there in second place, 1-2-2, two, two, the Citroen Visa of John Waghorn. Fourth, then comes number 96, Adrian Kingwell, and number 95, Rob Gooding, to complete the order. And we're told that Mark Renanson is still awaiting the arrival of his tailgate. Uh, while was left with his batteries being charged up overnight. They left very, very early this morning, but lo and behold, they omitted to put the tailgate back on the car when they watched proceedings. That's a crying shame, but our sympathy goes to all the team members for their hard work to be thwarted by such a small uh, item such as that. It really is rotten luck indeed. and a very mixed bag of car drivers going down into that first corner. Quite a lot of former SPC exponents in there, including Pete Malham and Antonio Forza, who's in second place, ex autographer That is uh, Norman Orchard, number 94, as Antonio Forza's brand new mini, which is lying a very promising second. And Mike Marchant is off onto the grass. Mick Marchant losing that lead, going very, very wide on the exit of the Devil's Elbow. And the well-known contractor from down in South Sussex there drops right down to the tail end, and that puts the former mini cross exponent, Chris Ward, up into the lead. Chris Ward driving a car that used to be used by Mike Andrews, and the ex mini crosser from Epsom leading the former SPC driver from Sittingbourne, Pete Malham, in what he likes to think is a four wheel drive Ford Escort. He's in second place, Mike Locks improved by the Starlet in third, then comes Antonio Forza and uh, Mick Marchant, two drivers who were at the front end of this order on the previous lap but have now dropped down to the tail. And that's Norman Orchin coming up to challenge Mick Marchant there at the tail end of the field. Norman, who's had seven years in autograph, this is his second season in Rally Cross. Nicely turned out car for Norman Orchin, but up front it's still the former Mini Cross exponent, Chris Ward. 
Chris, who's in on his second rally cross. Technical representative from Epsom in Surrey, still holding off the attentions of the sitting boy engineer, Pete Malin, with the Pinto-powered Escort, which ought to be going a bit better than this if it's four-wheel drive. <laughs> Still in second place, Pete Mailer. Mike Locke, improving every meeting now with the Toyota Silent Twin Cam. Then comes new boy Antonio Forza, who's moved out of the SBT category. Then Mick Marchant with the pushrod Ford Escort, powered by a Blue Line power unit. And Mike Locke coming up to challenge for second place. Mike Locke having a very close look there at Pete Mailer. He's here this afternoon. He's been battling long and hard these last two months to get that Toyota Starlet fully competitive. We've seen the Toyota Starlets all conquering on the ovals, on short circuit racing, but on rallycross, well, this is the only one that we've got at the moment. But as Mike was saying, the suspension systems used on an oval circuit uh, rallycross, and that's what's been very difficult to find on the Toyota Starlet, but they are getting it sorted. And this good run here is first place. He's now beginning to demonstrate. And Mike goes down there into Tesla. Third place. Still Pete Mail in second. He's gone number 400, the 1600 Pinto powered, immaculately turned out Mark II Ford Escort. But the leader and the winner at the line, number 187, Chris Ward, then wins that one from number 400, Pete Mail 273, Mike Locke. A very promising third with the Toyota. A good run into fourth place for number 13, Antonio Forza, in his first ever rally cross outside of the SPC category. Then number 94, Norman Alchin with Mick Marchant having gone missing. Mick, who finished third overall in the Swindon Phoenix uh, Rallycross Champion, who very, came very, very close to winning the Formula D Championship here at Lytton Hill last winter. That's Ray Houghton from Loughton, with the uh, River Speed International entered Mountain powered 1480s equipment, photocopiers, as I said, comes from Loughton, and one of the quickest minis in British Rallycross. Beside him, the twin cam of uh, Bob Smith from Orpington, car number 177. Uh, the aforementioned Paul Braddock. And as they go down into Jessens for the first time, it's Bob Smith trying to treat, streak in front from the centre position, but can't do it. And as the, un, the steering mini goes a little bit wide, Bob Smith trying to get on the inside, but couldn't do it. And it's Ray Houghton then coming off Jessens first and onto the Dover Slope in the lead. 142 Ray Houghton from 177 Bob Smith, 730 Dave Ward. Number 20 Len Payne and 136 Paul Braddock. That's the order into the Devil's Elbow for the first time. Dave Ward, very much a man to watch for the future, I think. HGB fitter comes from Great Dunmow in Essex. The driver who established overall fastest time of the day at Brands Hatch last Boxing Day, you may well recall. Metro from the West Country is coming into his ownership very shortly. That's number 30, Dave Ward there in third place. But up front is still Ray Houghton from Loughton. Then comes Bob Smith. Len Payne in fourth, the former Lytton class champion here a couple of seasons ago. In fourth position there, Len Payne. Len Payne, and behind him, the little 850 Acelli Mini of Paul Braddock. But it's Ray Houghton getting away as Dave Ward comes up to have a look at 177 Bob Smith. Bob still holding off Dave Ward, but can't at the moment seemingly do much about Ray Houghton. And it's Ray leading them up to and round the North Bend hairpin for the second time. Ray's telling me this morning that he feels that once again this year, Barry Crump's going to be the guy to beat in Formula D here at Lytton Hill. Reliability, so it's going to be interesting to see what the outcome will be. But meantime, it's the entry of Ray Houghton. This one from Bob Smith, Dave Ward there, still in third place. Len Payne down in fourth in a Mini that used to be driven by David Potter several years ago. And then Paul Braddock, who in these ultra dry conditions just can't get with them with an 850. And who would expect that he could? I'm here purely for the fun of it, he says. Well, it's good to know that at least somebody is. And Paul Braddock, I'm sure, will be thoroughly enjoying himself there, despite being some way back in last position. His wife has just completed her first season in autocross, which I think she was quite successful, and Paul is currently trying to tempt her into this car to have a go at Rallycross. As we get Ray Houghton then coming past Mab's Bank, to go away through the decade. They can sure well clear still of Bob Smith. Dave Ward still not able to do anything about the second place twin cam escort of the Orpington garage manager as Len Payne, number 20, goes on his way in fourth slot. Those cars coming through then to the checkered flag. And Ray Houghton it is. Coming down, car number 142 to take victory for Rip Speed International with a mighty aluminium product entry of 177 Bob Smith in second place. Then comes number 730 Dave Ward, number 20. 
motor accessory shop proprietor of Mount Len Payne. And that just leaves us with our geologist friend, who I wouldn't think has been taking too close a look at the soil as he comes through into fifth position. That's number 136, uh, Paul Braddock.